Susan, Susan Thatcher, thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. And first, can you introduce us? Can you introduce yourself to the audience and tell us about the work you're doing in ITU? Mm -hmm. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Susan Thatcher. I'm head of the Market Information and Statistics Division in the ITU um, Telecommunication Development Bureau. Mm -hmm. So, can you tell us about the World Telecom Development Report, which was released in the uh, WTDC 2010? Mm -hmm. This is our uh, latest edition of the World Telecommunication ICT Development Report, the 2010 edition, and it has a special theme that is focusing on monitoring the WSIS targets. Mm -hmm. These are the targets uh, that were identified by governments um, at the World Summit on the Information Society, which took place in Geneva in 2003 and in Tunis in 2005. Mm -hmm. And uh, we chose uh, this uh, theme because um, 2010 is the midpoint mm -hmm. between the conclusion of the summit in 2005 mm -hmm. and 2015, which mm -hmm. is the target date mm -hmm. that has been determined uh, to achieve the targets mm -hmm. in line with the target date of the Millennium Development Goals. Mm -hmm. So the report, in a way, is a midterm stock taking mm -hmm. assessment of uh, where do we stand on each of the 10 targets that have been identified at the summit at the time. Mm -hmm. So for some of our audience who may not know about the WISIS targets, can you elaborate on the different targets and what are they uh, centered about? Mm -hmm. There are a total of 10 uh, targets and uh, several of them uh, relate to connecting uh, people and institutions. So, for example, we have a target that calls for connecting villages. Mm -hmm. We have one about connecting schools, connecting hospitals and health centers, connecting governments, mm -hmm. connecting museums, archives, post offices and cultural centers. Mm -hmm. We have two targets about um, uh, education, uh -huh. uh, one well, connecting schools and then uh -huh. also to uh, teach ICT in schools and uh, make um, uh, the curriculum ICT based. Uh -huh. We have a target about developing um, language diversity on the internet and uh -huh. more local content. Uh -huh. We have a target about uh, making available access to radio and TV to uh -huh. everybody. And the last uh, target um, calls for um, half of the global population should have access to ICTs mm -hmm. within their reach uh -huh. uh, by 2015. Mm. So there are a range of different targets. Um, some of them uh, have not been very precise. So what we also do in the report is we uh, make some precisions uh, to uh -huh. the targets. Mm -hmm. For example, connect all schools, okay. um, so that by 2015 all schools should be connected. And we identify a set of measurable indicators mm -hmm. for each target, because how do you monitor them, uh -huh. right? Yes. So you need to first say, okay, what is our indicator, which we can then use to see where we stand and whether we have achieved it or not. Mm -hmm. So for each of the targets, mm -hmm. we identify some indicators that uh, can be collected and then we make an assessment mm -hmm. where we now stand um, midway through. Mm -hmm. And will you, will you be changing these indicators or indexes over time or will they uh, be fixed? Um, we think that uh, that is a very good uh, basis for the measurement, uh -huh. but we want to involve uh, the wider uh, community uh -huh. to consult okay. uh, on the indicators because we would like to uh, develop um, an agreed monitoring framework for the targets. Mm. So we work very closely with other um, organizations and uh, partners mm -hmm. who are also in, involved and interested in the subject matter mm -hmm. and we will consult uh, with our members so in the end we are having um, sort of an agreed upon uh, list of indicators mm -hmm. but this is going to be uh, a very good basis because mm -hmm. a lot of work has gone already into identifying the indicators and many of them are based on indicators that are actually collected now uh -huh already because uh, the data availability of course plays an important role. Okay. You mentioned uh, part of the uh, findings that you mentioned was internet growth. So can you highlight on this briefly on how internet growth has been taking place in the uh, recent years? Mm -hmm. 
So internet has uh, dub internet uh, usage has doubled uh, since the conclusion of the summit between 2000, uh, the end of 2003 and the end of 2009, because that's mm -hmm. our reference uh, time framework has doubled. It has grown uh, everywhere, as we know, in developed developing countries. In fact, the share of developing country users has grown also significantly during the past few years. Mm. Nevertheless, there is still a lot of work to do mm. uh, in terms of bringing more people online. Mm. And in fact, uh, at the end of 2009, there were still um, three out of four people were still not mm. online, globally mm. speaking and four out of five in the developing world mm. were still not online. So uh, there are important challenges that uh, need to be addressed uh, mm. in the years to come. Mm. Broadband growth is also one of the interesting areas you touched on today. So mm. also can you tell us more about it? Broadband uh, is now becoming uh, more and more important mm. because uh, to access a lot of the applications that are available online, uh, you need uh, high-speed uh, connections. So mm. this is now becoming um, a very, very important uh, part in all of the countries when we talk about internet use. Mm. So broadband access also in developing countries is still not uh, very advanced, unfortunately. Mm. This is an area that uh, we have to work uh, a lot on and this is also one of our key missions in ITU. We have just launched uh, the Broadband uh, Commission, mm -hmm. which is uh, giving an impetus into the uh, rollout of more broadband infrastructure, especially mm -hmm. in the developing countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have set as a target mm -hmm. in the report is, uh, and I'm coming back to the target uh, 10, which says that in 2015, half the population yeah. should have access to ICTs. Indeed, our main recommendation is that by 2015, half of the population should have access to broadband internet. This is uh, this is so very very important. Uh, so, this is one of the main recommendations uh -huh. that we um, put forward in the report. Mm -hmm. So, going to some of the detailed findings of the report, uh, can you tell us more about government connectivity? And how, uh, what are the major findings in that area that you came across? Government connectivity, that is one of the targets to connect governments, uh, to uh, provide uh, websites uh, mm -hmm. and services online for citizens. So we have, um, we have looked into, into that uh, and have uh, assessed the progress. Mm. And uh, we have found that uh, most of the central governments and uh, ministries are online today, mm. so almost all um, <coughs> countries have central government websites now. Oh. That is that is a, a very good progress. But if we go uh, to a different level of government, uh, let's say within the country, a state or regional or um, mm. local level, mm -hmm. then uh, then of course uh, the connectivity uh, doesn't does look quite differently. Mm. Also, what is important is not only putting up a website, but the kind of online uh, services, no. public services that are being made available to citizens. Mm. Like, uh, can they access information or can they actually fill out a tax form mm. or uh, apply for a driver's license? Mm -hmm. uh, mm. So, uh, it's not just putting mm. up uh, information, uh, general information mm. and perhaps an email address, but um, government, e-government needs to go further mm. and, uh, and, and uh, provide interactive uh, services, transactional services mm -hmm. uh, for citizens mm -hmm. so they can actually uh, become uh, more efficient uh, by using the online services. Uh -huh. Also, school connectivity is a very interesting area. Can you tell us more about it? Yes, we have uh, worked on this uh, also closely with our um, co-authors mm -hmm. from uh, UNESCO. Mm -hmm. uh, we have looked into data on schools connected to the internet and mm. to broadband. Mm. And um, we don't have a global figure, but for the developing countries where data are available, mm. some have done a very active uh, promotion of connecting schools in the country. But then in many countries, mm. if you again, if you go outside the major cities uh, where internet access becomes uh, much less available mm. and especially broadband access, also the schools uh, don't have, uh, they don't have internet access um, and they don't have a lot of um, ICTs, computers, mm. uh, for example, in the schools or 
ICTs are not yet part of the curriculum in mm. terms of teaching. Yeah. So that is an area where also a lot of um, um, uh, where policy can make a big difference. Mm. And um, ITU has uh, the Connect to School, Connect the Community initiative. So mm. we are working very closely with our members um, mm -hmm. to enhance the availability of internet in schools. Mm -hmm. So one of the most interesting areas we want to discuss with you in detail is online content, since it's part of the WISIS target. So first, can you tell us what is your vision regarding the relationship between online content and the digital divide? Are they closely connected or are they not? Well, we are saying in the report mm -hmm. that the digital divide is also a content divide. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if we look um, at uh, languages, for example, mm -hmm. uh, English is still the dominant uh, language on the internet, although estimates uh, say that only 15% of the population, the world population, understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, yet, still, most of content is in English. However, Relatively speaking, uh, English content is uh, is declining mm. because um, not absolutely speaking because yeah. there's a the, the growth of content is just incredible mm. overall. However, you can see now also a lot of growth in other languages. Um, although it's still the, it's still a few languages. The chapter on uh, on on the target that, that looks into language diversity and, and online content. Mm. Uh, illustrates uh, how few languages are, are represented on the internet, um, and uh, mm. how and the, the the large number of languages that exist in the world. Mm. So there's a huge uh, gap. Um, yet, if you want to bring more people online, they have to have um, meaningful information uh, on the internet. So that's why the issue of language diversity and content in local languages becomes uh, mm. is, is a very important issue that uh, that will be there um, until we have uh, managed to bridge this gap. Uh. Mm -hmm. So when we speak about uh, online content, the internalization of uh, internet domains, how do you think this impacts the quantity and quality of e-content? Well, we, we think this is a very um, important step mm -hmm. in a direction uh, to uh, bring a more uh, content in, in local languages on the internet. Mm. Um, this can be sort of a, a process that will be driven then uh, from the bottom, let's say, mm. because once you can make this content available in those languages, then mm. a lot more people will put up uh, content and yeah. this will drive the process. So, mm -hmm. so uh, we highlight that this is a very important step in, in the right direction and uh, so we think uh, it will it will improve through this uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the near future. Mm -hmm. So when we always speak about e-content, the language diversity always uh, is on the surface of the discussion. So can you tell us about the major top languages that, that are really popular and then how do you think we can overcome the problem of language diversity if it's a problem? Okay, here I'm holding up the chart that shows you the top uh, languages on the internet as of um, 2009. You can see here that English is still uh, the top language, but if the Chinese is following closely. Mm. If we would have looked at that a few years ago, uh, the distance would have been much bigger between English and the other languages. Mm. So, of course, with the number of Chinese uh, users, this is growing very quickly. This is followed by Spanish, Japanese, French, Portuguese, German, Arabic, Russian, Korean. Mm. So these are just the top, uh, the top languages. Mm. So, but then you can see um, it becomes very few further down. Uh, uh -huh. So these are just a few languages, given that we have uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, local mm -hmm. languages. Uh, mm. And if we really want to reach out to local populations, mm -hmm. we need to uh, make sure that there is content of, uh, on the internet mm -hmm. that is meaningful and, and useful for them. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of the there are there number of uh, ways of how this can or is likely to to improve. Mm -hmm. One is, um, uh, let's say, we also look into the report. Um, uh, in terms of uh, making content available uh, that is now in libraries, museums, mm -hmm. or cultural center by digitizing mm -hmm. locally available content. Mm -hmm. This is also very important in preserving actually heritage. Mm -hmm. And uh, some countries have started to, to do that. They have uh, digitized uh, 
uh, content, uh, information they have uh, in libraries or in museums mm. or in other local cultural centers mm. that they would then upload um, and yeah. make available uh, on the internet. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's, that's one part that is uh, a good step in the right direction. Mm. Another interesting uh, development is of course um, uh, voice, um, video mm -hmm. and uh, other content that is now increasingly mm. uh, becoming important on the internet. And here, uh, then of course you can have local language uh, available mm. uh, uh, very easily because we are talking about voice. Mm. Uh, and that's an, a development that will increase also in the future. This is more user driven, uh -huh. but uh, you have to look at all the components, of course, where is the content uh, coming coming from. Mm. And that is also something uh, that, uh, that is a, a positive development where more uh, users will, will find uh, information. But again, um, the connection and the broadband uh, will, will play an important uh, role here because mm -hmm. that is also very, um, uh, very heavy uh, uh, in, in size in terms mm -hmm. of, uh, of capacity of the connection that you, you have to have. Uh, uh -huh. So in order for a country to increase its local content, does it have to be government driven or user driven or both? How do you see it based on the experiences or the different uh, experiments of different countries that you have came across just briefly? Well, it, it, it should be both mm. uh, because uh, of course you will have the user driven content that you have everywhere. Mm. And this is something that will eventually also uh, come in the countries where internet use is just starting to, mm. to develop. But uh, governments should also play an active role because we talked already about e-government. Mm. That is very important content mm. and the governments can do a lot to, to have important and meaningful content made available online mm. to their citizens uh, that will be highly appreciated. So that's an area where governments uh, definitely can, can play a very important role. And then when we talk about public institutions mm. and making content available on certain applications, be it in education, be it in health, mm. um, be it in, in digitizing information that is mm -hmm. available, this is something where governments uh, can play uh, a very important role. So mm. both of them will, will grow together and, uh, and complement each other. Mm -hmm. So the provision of software in local languages, how do you think that relates to increasing e-content? Uh, for any other for any country well that goes of course hand in hand mm. uh, because if you have applications uh, for example um, they they need to be um, based on on software uh, mm -hmm. if you want to have applications in local languages mm. then you also have to have the corresponding uh, software in in local languages mm. so i mean one in a way doesn't go uh, without the other that is mm. that is a very important aspect of it Mm -hmm. So my final two questions. How do you think, you mentioned in the report that there are technical barriers to the uh, spread of online content. So what are these technical barriers that you referred to and how can a country uh, uh, try to work to overcome these barriers? Yeah, we talked already a little bit about the internationalization of the um, domain names. Mm. So the opening up to non-Latin script characters, for example, this has just happened now. Mm. This was a major uh, issue mm. to put up uh, more content in languages other than uh, that are not following the Latin scripts, oh. right? So this was an important issue that uh, that has been that is now being addressed and mm. which. Uh, has to be has to continue in the future mm. other technical barriers are more hardware and uh, software related for example if we talk about um, uh, translations mm. uh, or for example uh, voice assisted uh, services um, we talk about um, software models that go into um, modifying um, character sets language mm -hmm. codes electronic dictionaries uh, and other terminology, multilingual search engines, for uh -huh. example, that need to be available, um, translation tools, uh, machine translation tools, mm. um, and, um, and then software generally that, can, that is available in local language, mm. so that you have ap applications that can go with it. Mm -hmm. So these are areas that are still, that still are, they are being developed, they are being addressed, and they all will help uh, to have more 
uh, language diversity available on on the uh, internet. Mm -hmm. So my final question, as we look forward for the next five years, uh, you mentioned that one of the, uh, or two of the upcoming steps are promoting digital literacy and also establishing an e-culture. So can you highlight on both uh, topics and tell us how you envision them and what is ITU doing for in these? Uh, yeah, in fact, um, we highlighted uh, three main policy areas. Indeed, in the report, mm. for each of the target, we have a set of policy recommendations on how okay. to achieve that particular target. Uh -huh. So for each of the targets, uh, there are very specific uh, recommendations. Uh, but to, to summarize, uh, mm. we have three main areas where we see that uh, action should be taken. Mm. One is on the broadband deployment, mm -hmm. because a lot of it is about connecting institutions, connecting people, and we have included a broadband indicator in most of the targets. Mm. So this is uh, one very important area, and it's also something where IT, ITU, of course, plays a very important mm -hmm. role. The other two areas are um, uh, building uh, ICT literacy mm. because we have seen that uh, that's a very important part of the information society mm. is uh, how literate are people to actually make uh, use of the, of, of the internet, of the content, of the applications mm. uh, and often that's a major barrier mm. in even literacy itself. Uh, is already a barrier because mm -hmm. you have uh, a lot of illiterate people all together mm -hmm. and ICT literacy is uh, another barrier mm -hmm. that also needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. So this is something uh, that can be addressed in schools, in other training. Um, countries here also will have to um, play an important role in helping their citizens to become more ICT literate. Mm. And then uh, the other area is related to con content. Um, providing more content to make the internet meaningful to, to users. This is, uh, as we discussed before, this is something that goes hand in hand in terms of user-driven and, um, uh -huh. and government-driven. Uh -huh. So both play, both will play an important role here. Mm. And uh, with the development of more um, user-relevant uh, content, uh, also the, the uptake of internet will increase and uh, people will be able to benefit more mm. from the possibilities that the internet offers. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for your insights and we wish you the best of luck and see you soon in Doha.